Is it just me or is time flying? I know the majority of you are going to cry about how you just got Android 11, but suck it up Charlie, the train's moving and we're going to get to the next station. Android 12 or Android S, whatever floats your boat, is what we're looking at today. As of now, I'm running the latest Android 12 developer preview one on my Pixel 4 XL and depending on when you watch this video, some of these features that I'm about to show off could change or even disappear in a future update. Plus, since it's just the first Android 12 release, there aren't going to be a ton of new changes to show off. Nonetheless, let's start it off with the more significant changes. When enabling the dark theme, the notification panel is no longer pitch black. Instead, it's a very dark shade of blue, and even when you switch to a light theme, the white background still has a slight blue tint. I'm personally not a big fan of it, and I'm crossing my fingers that it's just a temporary thing. The notifications have also been tweaked a bit, the text has been slightly moved to the right to make space for a bigger icon, and it seems like the Google app icons are now circled. On top of that, the snoozing button has been added to the corner of each notification for easier access. And for the media player, you can finally determine which of your apps are allowed to display the media controls within the quick settings. Before, any app could bring up these controls as long as it played sound in the background. Now, within the settings under sound and vibration, and then media, you can deselect any apps. or you can turn off the media controls altogether. Also, it's not confirmed yet, but you know those options that show up when you half drag a notification? Yeah, they could be removed in a future Android 12 update. I mean, most people don't even use it or know that it's there, so it's kind of makes sense. The settings have also received a few minor visual changes. The search bar at the top doesn't extend to the edges like it used to, and it's a lot more rounded. Honestly, I think it looks a lot better now. And when you jump into a menu within the settings, the background turns into a blue tint, making it easier to tell that you're within a sub menu. Finally, the toggle within the developer options has a new design. As previously rumored, you'll be able to share your Wi-Fi networks using Google's nearby share feature. You can find this option within the settings under network and internet, Wi-Fi, selecting your current network, tapping on share, and then nearby. It may not be as fast as just telling someone your password, but it's a great option if you don't want anyone to know it. Screenshots have also been improved. When you take one, the share and edit button appear a lot faster now. Plus to dismiss it, you can just swipe it to the left instead of having to tap on a small little X. And when you edit a screenshot, you can now add text or emojis or even erase them. Those are the only changes that are live for screenshots, but there have also been a few leaks from XDA that show off a new scroll button, which could be a new implementation for extended screenshots. I'm extremely excited about that. If you're in an emergency and need to call the cops, you can now quickly press the power button five times and it'll launch a five second countdown to call 911. Within the settings, you can even change the number. Those are most of the bigger changes. Now I wanted to show off the minor ones that I honestly still think are useful. Firstly, there's a new grid size option of four x five for the Pixel home screen. It doesn't appear on every Pixel device, but I did read that it does lower the icon density and doesn't make the icons themselves bigger, which is nice. The gesture navigation has also been slightly improved for when you're in full screen. Uh, for example, when you're in the Google Photos app and you make a picture full screen. On Android 11, when you try to exit it, you need to swipe on the edges twice. But with Android 12, you just need to swipe once to go back to the main screen. It just saves you an extra gesture. Android 12 is also looking to provide vibration support for any connected controller. So when you play a game and it makes a loud boom or buzz noise, the controller will vibrate. For my Pixel 5 users, if you upgrade to Android 12, you'll be able to hide the camera hole punch within the developer options. You can already do this on the Pixel 3 XL, but surprisingly not on the latest Google Pixel. There's been a few times where I tap on a notification and then nothing happened until a minute or two had passed. Twitter was guilty of this and there are still a good amount of apps that do this, but with Android 12, there's no longer going to be slow loading notifications since it'll just forbid apps from doing this. Anyways, those are all the live features that have been discovered within the first developer preview for Android 12. I told you it wasn't gonna be a lot, but I did wanna talk about some possible upcoming changes that XDA developers manually enabled. Finally, there might be a new mode that makes it easier to use the phone with one hand, and it works just like the feature found within iOS. It drops the entire screen vertically so that you can reach the top areas of an app. I personally would never use this feature, but I may use this new upcoming feature flag called Silky Home, which will make the entire interface easier to use with one hand similar to that of Samsung's One UI software. As of now, you can't even enable it using ADB. Moving on with iOS having widgets that stack on top of each other, Google may be working on a response. Instead of swiping up and down, they're making their at-a-glance widget swipe left or right. 
saves it an extra space or two on the home screen, and I honestly love the idea. There may also be two new quick setting tiles that will allow you to block the camera or mute the microphone. And finally, there's going to be an easier way to resize videos that are in picture in picture mode. In Android 11, you need to drag the corner of the video to resize it, but with Android 12, you'll be able to pinch in and out. It's just like how they do it in iOS. And you'll also be able to stash the video on either side of the screen so that way you can hide it and bring it back easily later on. Either way, that's my first look at Android 12 Developer Preview 1. If you enjoyed it, make sure to drop a thumbs up. I'll include a link to a Twitter handle by Michal where he updates it with new possible Android 12 upcoming features. Also, if you like this content and would like to see similar videos like this in the future, make sure to get subscribed with the notification bell turned on. You're not going to want to miss out. Thank you guys for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Kapow!